It only takes one. One moment. One person. And one terrible decision. To permanently erase 14,000 years of culture and history. Forever. Right now, for the Koi Pomo, I am the vice chairman, treasurer, and tribal administrator. I also oversee the cultural aspects of, of the tribe, making sure our history and our prehistory is intact. I've got, a pretty, I've got a great job. Some great things have happened to me in my life, you know. Um, you know my, my partner. My, my wonderful fiance, you know, all her family, um, you know, my family. It's just every aspect of my life is just really elevated to a level of appreciation and mostly a respect and mostly love that I, I just can't believe. I'm the luckiest guy I know. As part of Dino's job as vice chairman, he frequently travels to the southern part of the Clear Lake Basin in order to protect his tribe's history and culture. There, he's able to reconnect with an area that his ancestors called home for thousands of years. This land, it's, it's a beautiful area. It's a beautiful area. Some parts of it just, I don't know, they, they talk about what paradise is. And there are, some, there are areas here that, to me, are, are paradise. When I'm out on the lake in a boat and looking around at the mountains and the beautiful green hills in the springtime, listening to the fish jumping, I mean, it's just, it takes your breath away, really. The Clear Lake Basin is truly remarkable. Over many years, incredible geological forces in the basin have formed the perfect set of circumstances for life to not only exist, but to flourish. These forces formed an extensive natural bowl that created California's oldest and largest freshwater lake raised rolling hills and majestic mountains, and spawned lush wetlands and oak groves that make it a beautiful place to live. Well, this is where I'm from. This area is where I'm from. This is where my people are from. This is where I belong. There's just so much rich history here that we can go on for days. It's a really great feeling, you know, to know that I'm connected to this area. I don't have to go to my motherland. I'm here. 
I'm here. The answers are here. That's a great thing. Due to its abundance of natural resources, temperate climate, and gentle topography, there were few places more suited for human habitation than the Clear Lake Basin. So when humans first started colonizing North America around 25,000 years ago, they knew they had found something truly special. These first colonizers were known as the Pomo. On the southeastern part of the lake were the Elam, Kamdat, and the Khoi. The Elam and Kamdat lived in the Oak's Arm, while the Khoi lived on an island in the area now known as Anderson Marsh. In the north were the Danoha, Hawalek, Kayo, and Yobotui. In 1878, these tribal groups joined together to form the Habematol Pomo, which live in the area now known as Upper Lake. I am the chairperson of the Tribal Executive Council. It's a role that I take a lot of pride in. I'm a mother of two children, um, adult children at this point in my life. Uh, my daughter is 20, and uh, she had played softball since she was seven. My son has um, developed a, a, a real good knowledge of cars has over the course of his very young life at 25 owned probably more cars than I will ever own in my lifetime, but he's very bright. Between taking part in her children's lives and fulfilling the demanding role of a tribal chairperson, Sherry is constantly hard at work. Her job often requires her to wake up early, stay late, and travel many miles in order to tackle the myriad challenges her position entails. Even so, she has gladly worked tirelessly for many years in order to achieve her ultimate goal, to protect and preserve the Habematol culture for her tribe and her family. It's bittersweet, um, a lot of sacrifice. Would I trade it for anything? I would never do that. I, I fully stand and believe that we have done so much, come so far in a very short amount of time, and it's all been worth it. When I was a kid, we used to vacation here all the time. And so I was aware of the Native American community in the county. When I got to college, uh, I took a class on archeology span and that Easter, we were coming up to Lake County to, uh, you know, for recreation and fishing. I had to do a class project and uh, one, my, one of my class projects, I decided I'd go around and record some of the prehistoric sites in the Clear Lake Basin. During these initial excavations, archaeologist John Parker developed a deep curiosity about Clear Lake's prehistory. So when archaeological surveys first began at the southeast portion of the lake in 1977, John jumped at the chance to discover more about the basin's unique and storied past. He and a team from Sonoma State began excavating at Anderson Marsh. We recorded more sites in a day than I had recorded in years doing archeology span at other places in California. It was just incredible. As exciting as John's discovery was, 
There was no doubt as to why there was so much evidence for human activity in Clear Lake's prehistoric past. It all had to do with resources. Clear Lake had just the right combination of natural resources that allowed people to build homes, eat nutritious food, drink clean water, and fashion tools, making it an oasis in an otherwise tough mountainous landscape. One of the most important resources around the lake was the tule. Now, tule is a long, straight bulrush um, that has a whole bunch of different applications. We use them for boats, we use them for shelter, we use them for clothing. You can cut a bunch of tule, lay it up on the bank to dry, bundle it up, and make a boat out of it. And the houses, the, the thatching on the huts or the houses were made out of tule. It was an amazing resource. Clear Lake was also fortunate enough to have a high quality source for obsidian near Borax Lake. Obsidian was the perfect material to fashion into tools such as knives, drills, and spear points. One of the other resources that was so important in Lake County was uh, the fish resource. The fish that were in the lake swam up these streams during the spring floods, laid their eggs, and then came back to the main lake to finish their life. When the fish came back after laying their eggs, you could harvest tons, literally tons and tons of fish. You didn't need a fishing pole. You went in by your hands and you reached down and you grabbed them. There were tens of thousands of them just they literally bulging out of the creek. It was incredible. These unique resources allowed the Pomo to develop a rich, complex, and long cultural history at the Clear Lake Basin that was able to last from the very beginning of the colonization of America until today. Now, if you ask a Native American, we're going to always say we've been here. They are one of the oldest cultures in the New World, not just in California. We know that they were here in Lake County for at least 14,500 years. The only way the timetable seems to be going is back, back, and back. For 14,000 years, the Pomo enjoyed the incredible bounty of their longtime home. By the 1840s, all of that would change. In an insatiable desire for resources and slaves, Mexico and the United States began to forcibly resettle the Pomo to gold rush settlements and ranches as far as Napa, Solano, and Sonoma counties. Soon, only a handful of Khoi and Habematol Pomo were able to call Clear Lake home. This, is a, this area calls you back. One of my close friends, Cass, he jokingly says about my fiance Nora and I that Lower Lake is probably where we're going to retire. That's, that's great. Though it seemed as if the Pomo were at their nadir, there was still hope. Both the Khoi and the Habemato worked hard to restore their status as a nation, preserve their cultural resources, and bring back their land, traditions, and language. In 2005, the Habemato purchased a site in its aboriginal territory in order to restore its land that had been lost. Next to our culture, um, land is one of the most important things to a tribe. The day that we had our land blessing, it really gave us the motivation to continue. In 2012, the Koi visited the University of California, Davis, to see baskets that were collected in the late 1800s from ancestors living near Anderson Marsh. 
In 2017, the Koi visited the University of California, Berkeley, in order to research and breathe new life into their language. While the Khoi and Habematol were making great strides toward bringing back their land, culture, and language, one problem still remained, archeological destruction. During my 45 years of doing archeology span in the Clear Lake Basin, I've witnessed a lot of archeological crimes. You don't take artifacts or remains from the ground. It is like robbing your family's grave. Unfortunately, we have a large society of uh, looters who actually have been raiding artifacts all their life here and all over. And then some of them get the bones. Some of them actually look for our ancestors' bones. It's just despicable. These things are on the ground in a pattern, a pattern that tells us about the activities that were taking place there. If you remove any of those artifacts, you've taken away pieces of the puzzle. So much has been taken from our people, and this is all we have, and people keep taking it. People laid those artifacts there for a reason, whether they buried them, burned them, they laid them there with intent and it's not for anybody else to try to change that. They wouldn't want it done to them. Why would they do it to us? We can learn not only about the history of our Native American people and our own tribe, but about the history of man in itself. They experienced over-exploitation of resources. They experienced unequal distribution of resources. These are all problems that our own culture is dealing with today. And we don't know how long this way of life will last. And uh, people have said, well, maybe we should have paid more attention to a way of life that lasted 10,000 or maybe even 20,000 years. Each bulldozer that dug up sacred sites, obsidian flake that was put into a pocket, or mortar that was sold on the black market, ripped out another page in the Pomo's history that could never be replaced. After seeing a lot of this occur in Lake County, Dino decided it was time to do something about these crimes. And my cousin, Rob Morgan, who had been taking care of the patrolling of the, of the park here we're standing at, he would go to other areas we know and were known sites. And he saw somebody looting a site. So that's when we contacted the police. And the police says, well, he's not doing anything wrong. He may just be past trespassing, but that's up to the landowner to make that decision. I knew we were in trouble at that point. I called a, a meeting with the sheriff, and we sat down and we talked about what we what we had seen. I met with Dino shortly after I took office, and we quickly became friends. And I recognized a lot of the issues that he had um, with uh, Native American issues overlapped with us in law enforcement and that we could really work together. As a sheriff, to his core, his pet peeve is thieves. He found out that you know, how valuable these things are, not only to us, but he equates it to something that's dear to his heart. Native American burial sites are, uh, are akin to our, our national cemetery at Arlington. If somebody were to go into Arlington National Cemetery and try to dig up one of our ancestors uh, so that they could take a, a medal off their uniform, we'd be outraged. And I'm so glad that he uses that analogy because that's how we feel. That's how Native Americans feel. Even with an understanding sheriff, Dino and Sherry still faced an uphill battle. They would need the support of their councilman and the district attorney if they were to successfully monitor building projects and prosecute archeological crimes in Lake County. I feel a, a great responsibility to take care of the memories, to take care of the ancestors that have come before us. They've literally given their lives so I can be here. 
I think it's the least I can do to take care of them in the most respectful way possible. So I had to find other ways to do it. So when you have a tractor coming through and getting to build a project, there are certain laws that can help protect them. Tribes have been left out historically of that conversation at all when development has been on their former land base. So I first approached the city of Clear Lake. And the city of Clear Lake was really receptive. They had it in their hearts to do the right thing. And they voted unanimously to have our first memorandum of agreement. So then we started the negotiation process with the County of Lake. My tribe had established a very good working relationship with the county over years. It was that relationship that we were able to leverage for the local tribes to come to the table. You know, it's something that we needed to do a long time ago. We needed to have governance that recognize uh, tribal heritage. Uh, we needed to have a, a method of putting that together in such a way that everyone knew what they should be doing to make it work. I've not heard of one complaint, and we, I would. Believe me, if there were complaints, I would be getting them. And I've not heard one person, one developer come in and say, wait a minute, you know, I'm not gonna have the tribe telling me whether I can or can't do a project. It just hasn't happened. It was like somebody opened the curtains and, hey, here we are, these are our resources, we want to have a stake in helping to preserve them. Dino and his tribe, the Koi Nation, my tribe, the Habematol, as well as Robinson Rancheria sat down with Lake County. And we were able to pass only the sixth MOA in the history of the state of California. With newfound confidence due to their success, Dino and Sherry went to work on training their tribal members to monitor cultural sites. On our way to the cultural resource monitoring class, we're gonna do some in the classroom style teaching, uh, but Solomon is excellent when it comes time to bringing about uh, the laws. He's a man who lives our culture. And a cultural monitor's job is to not only speak on behalf of the community, but also the ancestors, the items that come out of the ground, and also work with the tribe to protect and preserve those items. I've learned that sacred site protection is important because that's our ancestors, and it's our ancestors that we need to, and those areas that they lived in, that we need to protect. To have partners who just say yes to doing whatever it takes to protect the sacred sites, educate the rest of the native population, it's just very motivating to have partners like this. I'm truly grateful that my tribe and the executive council are willing to fund educational programs that will protect our culture. They also joined with Sheriff Martin to hold a cultural training class to teach the deputies and other law enforcement of Lake County how to spot and prevent cultural and archeological crimes. This county has the best archeological resources anywhere in California, yet the local community has never really grasped the idea that, about how valuable these resources are. Since we had that training program on archeological crimes here, I've seen a huge turnaround. Two days following the, uh, the archaeological crimes class, I was uh, camping over at the coast in Fort Bragg and got a phone call and somebody said, you won't guess what Deputy Kreitzer did. Usually when I get those types of phone calls, it's not good news. In August of 2015, I happened to be at the substation in, uh, in Lower Lake. I was working on paperwork and I had a knock at the door from one of the, uh, the nearby residents. She was concerned that an individual who she believed transient was uh, parked in a vehicle across from her, uh, her residence. I took the opportunity to go look into this a little more deeply. Um, his vehicle happened to be open at the time. Uh, from there, I ended up finding uh, methamphetamine pipe 
and the archaeological artifacts that uh, were in the back of his truck. I got a call from the sheriff, and he says that they had to bust. Could not believe it. Could not believe it. Boy, we were, we were rejoicing. And, and thanks to our district attorney, Don Anderson, prosecution was done. I assigned the case to one of my best prosecutors, uh, Deputy District Attorney Daniel Flesh. When he got the case, he had to do a lot of research because we had no template, no, nothing really to go by, because it hadn't been done here. He was able to do the research to find the law that was necessary, and then eventually getting the artifacts returned to where they belong. to have the London Times, Los Angeles Times, San Francisco Chronicle, the New York Times, sending reporters out here to report on this, it brought true credibility. Oftentimes it's the human heart which has to be transformed. You know, these things that we've accomplished and has only been done by one simple thing. I was simply willing to do what others weren't. It's amazing when something is as important as our culture, um, what people can do with very little. A person without their culture, knowledge of their culture, is like a tree without roots. You can't exist if you don't know where you came from and what your culture is. The word I needed to get out to the municipalities, to the district attorneys, to the sheriffs, the police departments, is you can enter into these agreements with tribes and be effective. It takes everyone, every tribe, every county, every state, to forever save 14,000 years of our culture and history. But it only takes one to start saving the sacred.